Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you my project setup for building out a simple HTML5 game. Building games isn't something that I'm very experienced on, so feel free to critique my project setup and give me better suggestions. I did dabble in building games a while back, like in high school and college, but I kind of phased out of it when I got into web development and got a job building web applications. So right now I'm kind of diving back into that hobby to see if I could build a simple game and get people to play it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and look at my project setup. Right now I have a folder called Parcel Game Base. And basically inside of this I have a couple of files already set up for a very simple HTML5 game. Some things you might know or might not know is I'm using NPM to kind of pull in a couple of package dependencies. And the main one I'm using is called Parcel, which is basically a tool to kind of bundle up all your JavaScript, all your HTML, all your CSS into a single file so that it's really easy to build and deploy your code. And it's mainly used for web applications, but I thought it's a good tool I could probably use for building an HTML5 game. Um, so why not? With that being said, I have a package JSON, if you are familiar with how NPM works where I have a single dependency of parcel and I have a start script which basically runs parcel on my index.html and what this does if I were to load up my terminal here in VS Code I can do npm start and that is going to run parcel over my index.html file which is going to pretty much load in my index.js and continuously dive down the tree and pull in all those JavaScript files compile them and put them into a disk folder here. So if you see here we have a basic index file and we have a JavaScript file and probably some source mappings here. And we don't need to dive too much into the details on that, but basically it just takes all of your files, compiles them down to one so it's really quick to load, and then it hosts your application or your website, or in this case our game, at localhost 1234. So if I go back to my web browser, and refresh that, you'll notice that I have a simple red box that's traversing left to right. All right so I'll, I'll point out a couple of benefits. So the first benefit of using Parcel is anytime I save my index file or save my JavaScript, um, it'll automatically reload my browser and kind of refresh. So if I were to change this to a different color, and so instead of red, if I save this and go back over, notice that instantly my browser refreshed, it pulled in the new code, and now it's rendering a yellow box and making it move. So that's kind of one benefit. And I think you can use hot module reloading, but I haven't really dived into that to see if it actually works for building out a game. Um, but anyway, let me take a step back and kind of show you from top down what's going on. So again, we have the start script, which runs parcel on this index.html file. So if I go over and open up that index.html file, You'll notice that it's a basic bare bones HTML file that has a canvas tag, which is what I'm rendering onto the page. And then we have a script tag. And again, when parcel runs, it's basically going to traverse this HTML file. It finds any JavaScript files and it basically compiles them down into one. So, I, so actually, let's look at the index.js file here. And I'll kind of walk you through what's going on here. Um, again, feel free to critique this if there's better ways to do this, but I'm just starting off, so I mean this this seems like it works pretty well. Um, the first couple of things we run is basically grab that canvas tag, we get the 2D context from that canvas, which is used for rendering images, boxes, you know, primitive geometry shapes. And then we expand that canvas to be the same width and height of our window. So if I go back here and I hover over, let's say, the canvas, you'll notice that it has a width of basically the full screen of my monitor and then the height is this viewport that's highlighted in blue here. And there's a little bit of padding on the body that you can kind of get rid of with CSS if you want to. Um, and then what I've been doing in my games is I have a centralized state. So if you use like React, you might have heard of Redux, which is where you centralize all of your application state in a simple object or a single object. And by doing so, basically, you can keep track of your state over time. And it, there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, I'm not sure how you know most people do it with HTML5 games or games in general. I know there's a lot of object-oriented program that goes on, so your state's kind of spread out between tons and tons of different objects. 
And I'm not really a big fan of object-oriented programming and using like the this keyword in JavaScript. So most of the code I write is functional. It's not pure functional, but I try to be as functional as possible. Um, but that's, I kind of went off on a tangent there, but basically I have a state where I declare a box and it has an XY position. And we have a draw function, which clears the context every iteration. And then we're just drawing that box or drawing a red rectangle at that box's X location with a width and height of 100. And then we have an update function, which basically increments that box's X position by one every update tick. And then finally, we have the game loop, which again, there's probably a better way to do this, but using the built-in Windows request animation frame, you can basically loop as fast as possible without overusing resources. I think you get like 30 or 60 FPS on like your browser. So trying to render any faster than that is kind of pointless. You could do updates faster, I guess, but regardless, this is the loop I'm using. Um, basically every animation frame, you get the delta time, which I'm calling progress. We pass that the update, which you can use to kind of increment the box based on how much time has passed. And then we call draw, and then we just basically do this a good, over and over again for infinity. So again, one cool thing that Parcel or Webpack or any type of bundling tool you can use gives you is that you can separate all of your JavaScript files into separate files. So if I wanted to, I could say box.js here, and I can use ES6 import and export keywords to kind of export a box update and render function. So if I wanted to, I could say export default. I'll make it export a object as an update. And it has a draw. Put this on a new line. And I could just go ahead and grab those two functions and put them over here if I wanted to. This would probably need state, so I'll just go ahead and copy that over. And bear with me while I just kind of go through all this. I think clearing should probably happen before I draw. I'll get rid of all this. And now what I can do is just simply import those two. So I can say import um, box from dot slash box. And then parcel will grab that box file in. And then now I have the ability to do box.update. Go ahead and pass state in and then box.draw. And then assuming I don't have any syntax errors or I didn't screw that up, I mean the box should um nope, let's see, says so state is not defined. Although it is defined up there, let's see. Oh, my bad. I need to pass state into my draw function as well. So here I'll just pass in state. Go back. Okay, so we have a box that's moving again. So again, the main point of showing that refactoring is you can pull out all of your JavaScript files into different, or you can pull out all your components into different JavaScript files and then Parcel will just kind of import them all, do tree shaking if you have that enabled and then compile it all to a single JavaScript file. So it's really easy to publish your games. And I plan on kind of looking into using um, Electron to kind of bundle up my compiled parcel game to see how that works. So I might do a video of that soon. But yeah, hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully it gave you some insight as to how I'm currently building out a game loop and using some web technologies to bundle the game together. Um, if you have any suggestions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment. If you hate what I'm doing and you think it's a dumb approach, uh, feel free to say so. <laughs> um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you thought this was useful. And I totally forgot to mention that all this code that I'm working on in this YouTube channel, I'm going to post at this GitHub URL. So basically github.com slash Cody Seibert slash YouTube. And I'm going to have different folders for every video that I do. So if you ever want to grab code that I've demonstrated in a video, feel free to come in here and clone this repo or you know download the zip and grab what you want. All of it's MIT, so I don't, I don't, there's, there's no license on any of this stuff, just MIT, I guess. So feel free to do what you want with it. All right, thanks for watching. Again, my name is Cody Cyber.